If you check out the superhero graphic novel sales, one thing that will absolutely hit you right in the face immediately is not a lot of new stories you're actually selling. There's just not a lot of interest in the new stuff, but the old stuff, especially from DC Comics, is selling like hotcakes. It's the one thing that they can really trade on these days. And nostalgia is a big deal. Obviously, they're tying Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths, which was supposed to be, I don't know, playing off the 30th anniversary of Death of Superman. But now it's a direct sequel to Crisis on Infinite Earths. They're doing everything they can to sell their new stuff as being parts of their old stuff. And it's not surprising DC Comics are trying to cash in on the 30th anniversary of Superman's death by coming out with some original materials and celebrating what is a very impactful comic book story in the history of DC Comics. This day made headline news when people found out Superman was going to die and then they actually did it. You end up having like a 40-page comic that was just the most brutal fight you've ever seen in your life. Superman versus Doomsday to the death. They basically shredded each other apart. And certainly in the early 90s, DC Comics had grown up at that point. They were no longer only doing kind of silly comic books for kids. They had gotten a lot darker, especially with Batman and certain characters. But Superman, they still didn't treat really like that. Like, if you go see the Alan Moore versions of Batman, and then you go see what he did with Superman, totally, completely different. They didn't do a lot of kind of hardcore violence that had a lot of blood and guts in it with Superman at the times. So obviously, things have changed over the years, but it was a different take on the character, and it felt like a big moment. They were actually going to kill the character off, and it kind of dawned off some new characters. So they're celebrating it. They're bringing a lot of creators back. We're getting armbands and poly bags and all that stuff for the 30th anniversary, but I do have some issues with it, especially with the original stories that are coming out. I think some of them make absolutely no sense whatsoever. Some of them are 30 years too late, and some of them are just kind of ridiculous, like I don't even know what you're doing here. But here's the big news. Dan Jurgens, Brett Breeding, Roger Sturd, Butch Goosey, Louis Simonson, John Bogdanov, Jerry Ordway, and Tom Grummet are all returning for the death of Superman 30th anniversary special number one, releasing in November. The special features four brand new stories examining the detrimental weight Clark's death had on his friends and family. I do not blame DC Comics for taking this route with a special anniversary of one of the biggest storylines in the history of the publisher. You may call it a cash grab, and quite frankly, I do too, but it makes sense. It's an impactful story. Bringing the original creators back, I think, is an awesome move. I wish they would bring more of these writers back. Hey, if you had a Dan Jurgen story tying into Dark Crisis instead of uh, Megan Fitzmartin, maybe it wouldn't be so bad. So I think it's a good move bringing in a Roger Stern. We haven't seen him for a long time. We don't really see Dan Jurgens all that often. We certainly don't get to see Wheezy enough. So bringing them back, I think, is all great news. Although I do have a few issues with the execution, at least the plans that they've announced at this point. Is it a cash grab? Absolutely. Is it smart business? Yeah, for DC Comics, when you can't sell anything outside of Batman and old comic books, probably smart to do something with old comic books that sold and try to revamp them and squeeze a little bit more juice out of them Makes sense for a business perspective, but some of the plans are actually kind of stupid. The death of Superman 30th anniversary special number one celebrates the legendary battle between Superman and Doomsday with four all new stories from the teams of Dan Jurgens and Brett Breeding, Roger Stern and Butch Goosey, Louise Simonson and John Bogdanov, and Jerry Ordway and Tom Grummet. And the issues will all introduce a brand new villain named Doombreaker to the DC Universe. The four new stories explore the events of the original story from unique points of view, including Clark and Lois's son, Jonathan Kent, Steel, Guardian, and Ma and Pa Kent. Introducing a new villain named Doombreaker associated with Doomsday seems superfluous. You know, Doomsday is the ultimate threat to the DC Comics universe. He actually killed Superman, or at least seemingly at the time. Obviously, a year later, he came back and kind of rose from the dead. He was off in Justice Leaguers left and right. There was nothing they could do with the character can you take that character and up the ante by bringing in a newer version called Doombreaker? I'm not really sure, but hey, I guess we need new villains. I wish they would do original villains, not just villains already tied to villains that already exist. Like, can't we do anything original these days? I understand that's not exactly what this thing is doing. It is nostalgia bait. Nostalgia bait works. I like Jurassic World not because the story is great, because when I went and saw it, it kind of reminded me of when I saw Jurassic Park when I was like 15 years old. It's like I was a teenager in the theater again. I saw the music, I saw some set pieces, and I enjoyed the movie specifically because of that. The nostalgia bait works, but if you're going to introduce a new villain, can you at least do something a little bit more original than basically cloning Doomsday? 
the DC Comics universe is essentially infinite in scale. You could literally bring in aliens from anywhere you wanted. Why, why do you have to do the same things over and over? Now let's get into some of the brass tacks and details of the stories, a lot of which maybe you've noticed already don't make sense. First up, we have The Life of Superman by Dan Jurgens and Brett Breeding. A young John Kent finds out in school that his dad had died years earlier as his parents never told him about that fateful day. In the midst of dealing with this emotional news, John and Clark need to team up to fight a new villain connected to Doomsday called Doombreaker. I've already talked, obviously, about Doombreaker, but let's talk about the big revelation to John Kent that his father had died years earlier. That's not his dad. Does anyone at DC Comics remember where this Superman came from? You would think Dan Jurgens did. He wrote the goddamn story. It's not the same Superman. They wanted to replace the Superman from the New 52, so they went and found another Superman in another multiverse that was on a planet with a red sun so Lois and Clark Kent could procreate. They had a son, and then they brought him into Earth-1, and that's where we get the Superman we have today. He's actually not the one from this multiverse. That was one of the big stories and mysteries in DC Universe Rebirth, was will people figure out that this Superman and Lois are not actually from this world, and neither is John Kent. I guess I could see an angle where John Kent could care that another version of Superman that's not his dad died a long time ago fighting Doomsday, but you would think they would remember where this actually Superman came from. They did it to replace the new 52 Superman. And I guess that was like the easiest way to do it. Or am I just misremembering all that Superman stuff I read during DC Rebirth? I don't think I'm misremembering it. I'm pretty certain that Superman is not the Superman from this earth. So the Superman that died is not the father of John Kent. Like you would think they'd be able to figure that one out. The next story Standing Guard by Roger Stern, Butch Goosey, the epic battle between Superman and Doomsday from the Guardian's perspective. This one certainly makes more sense, I guess, from a DC Comics perspective, but the Guardian is essentially non-existent within the DC Comics universe. I'm a fan of the characters created by Joe Simon, and, and Jack Kirby is essentially DC's almost kind of version of uh, Captain America. You know, he's got the shield, he's not super-powered, but he doesn't have the Stars and Stripes and whatnot. The Guardian's a cool enough character, but they haven't done anything with him for a very long time. He made a very, very brief appearance in Future State, and that's about it. So I'll give it this. At least it's a unique perspective from a character that probably was affected by the death of Superman. But it happened 30 years ago. That's another one of the issues about all these stories. You're getting perspective on a story that's been over for 30 years. I understand celebrating it, but I think going back and showing why it was a meaningful event 30 years ago might not be the best way to do it. I don't know. Maybe I'm just too cynical at this point, but it feels like these stories probably should have been told 30 years ago when Superman actually died. Although he did just die, maybe they could have tied this into the Justice League dying and brought these great creators back and showed a perspective about how people were feeling the loss for a second time. I don't know. It feels like this would have affected John Kent more since it's his actual dad dying this time. That's another thing. The timing of this is just really off. All the Justice League characters, including Superman, just died anyway. Shouldn't they be concentrating on that? I mean, it's been a clusterfuck at this point. At first, they tried to tie it into the death of Superman, and they wanted to tie it into Crisis on Infinite Earths, and they had to rename it Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths. But this doesn't feel like it's going anywhere fast, and they're repeating the same story tropes and stuff in other comic books. Like, we just saw in Superman's Son of Kal-El that Dreamer had a dream about the Justice League dying, but she saved him, but it's like, well, no, you really didn't. They they still died. Where were you on that one, dipshit? You know what I mean? Like, did DC Comics need to start talking to each other and probably playing better for this kind of stuff. The third story, Time by Louise Simonson, John Bogdanov, the story of how the death of Superman looked from John Henry Irons' perspective. I'm a big fan of Louise Simonson, and I'm a big fan of her Steel series. In fact, I wish you would come back and do a Steel miniseries, but this angle of the character and how the death of Superman affected Steel has already been pretty much covered in the original series. That's how Steel got created. You know, he was motivated, and he was moved by the death of Superman and decided he was going to become a, a hero himself and, and step up to the plate when Superman was no longer with this, it's kind of retread at this point. Like you've already told this story in depth and in high quality fashion. So this does seem quite repetitive if you really think about it, but I guess you can't really complain about a Louise Simonson original story, including steel. I just wish they would do an original story about something we hadn't already read about. 
The fourth and final tale, Above and Beyond by Jerry Ordway and Tom Grummet. A powerful story of Ma and Pa Kent watching their son fight Doomsday live on television and going through Clark's photo album with the feeling that their son always prevails. This story easily makes the most sense, but once again, it's a story that probably should have been told 30 years ago. Why would you wait 30 years to tell this very intimate tale about how Ma and Pa Kent were affected by the death of their son? They knew he was going to win. He always triumphs. He'd saved the world so many times, and he finally falls to doomsday. Would have been just a traumatic, traumatic event for Ma and Pa Kent, and certainly worth exploring. No doubt about that. But it's 30 years too late. I, if this was the story, and maybe the 30th anniversary was a reprint of the original with this tacked onto it, I think I would be less cynical about it and probably more excited. But this is the story that makes the most sense to be powerful and worth reading. Like I said, John Kent's father never died in Death of Superman. It was a different Superman. The Guardian just really isn't a relevant character in the DC Comics universe right now. And we already saw how it affected Steel when they made the Steel miniseries and he became a hero after the death of Superman. So looking at it from the perspective of Ma and Pa Kent makes sense. And I think a lot of people will be interested in reading this story, but I think they probably should have highlighted and honed in on this story. And maybe with the other three creators and three stories, they could have done like an Elseworlds where Superman really did die and he didn't return. And maybe look at what life would have been for Steel 30 years after the death of Superman, how it affected him, how he triumphed and prevailed and, and what he was able to do and affect the universe. If Superman never returned, then you could do like a John Kent story, maybe where John Kent learns about the death of Superman and realizes his father can die, which although that doesn't really make sense because he already knows his father's going to die in the stories that we're reading now. Ugh, I just don't understand tying the John Kent stuff into any of this. Uh, the guardian, uh, I, I don't know why the character's there. It would have been more interesting to look at it like 30 years from now, Superman never returns. What kind of burden does Batman have? Or what kind of burden does Wonder Woman have? That would have been the natural successor really to Superman. She's got the powers and stuff. You would have expected her to kind of step up to the plate and really be that alpha level hero that leads everyone and everyone else kind of looks up to is Superman never returned. Maybe that could have been interesting, but this is what they chose to do. The death of Superman 30th anniversary deluxe edition will also include Superman day of doom number one through four for the first time ever. I imagine those are the stories we just talked about and will hit comic shops and bookstores December 6th. There will also be a Superman 75 special edition that features the original story and hits comic store shelves on November 1st. And I imagine that's where you're going to get the poly bag and the armbands and all that kind of stuff as they really try to milk this thing dry and try to squeeze every last cent out of the death of super red. You know, it's already been an animated movie. They kind of botched it, putting it into the uh, DCEU. Now they're trying to squeeze some last juice out of the comic book itself. I'm really excited that they're bringing the original creators back. And I think this is a story that needs celebrating, but I think they could have been more creative and found a better angle to celebrate it and telling a bunch of stories that don't feel like they matter most of the time and sometimes just don't make sense whatsoever especially with the john kent like what the hell is that thing superman in my mind is the most important superhero in all of comic books he's a role model to children all over the world black white red green blue whatever boy girl whatever gender you want to say People look up to Superman because he does what's right and he fights for what's right. DC Comics are trying to destroy the character, but we need to do what we can to help save him.